Welcome back to our series on managing Power Automate Desktop on Windows. In this video section, we'll be looking at how to install Power Automate Desktop through Intune. Since this is a longer video, we've split up into three subsections. The first section is about creating the Intune package. The second one will be around configuring Intune and deploying the package. And the third one will be around deploying Power Automate Desktop and managing the lifecycle through the ring deployment uh, methodology over there. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to need is the Microsoft Win32 content prep tool. I have it listed in the document, but this is the URL here, GitHub Microsoft, Microsoft Win32 content prep tool. You'll need to have this downloaded on your Windows 10 machine prior to building the package. And then also the package requirements are going to be Windows 10 Pro, Business, Enterprise, or Education version 17 or 9 or newer. Also, uh, we're not covering uh, Intune enrollment today, so we're only going to be uh, packaging the apps for devices that are already enrolled. Uh, for a, a detailed guide on how to get enrolled, uh, we can go through a different uh, recording for that. But the first thing that I wanted to do or to show was uh, first how to create an Azure security group. The reason I wanted to show how to create an Azure security group is because that's what we're going to be targeting our apps to. Uh, so you can either do it uh, right from the endpoint.microsoft.com URL, uh, and you can just go to groups. Or if you like working from uh, Azure, or portal.azure, you can go right through the Azure Active Directory, and you can create a group here. It's exactly the same. So what you do is you just click New Group. And uh, if you're setting up Power Automate for the first time, uh, I recommend setting up the, the groups first, just so that way you have them ready to go when you package the app. So there's three groups that you're really going to want to get created in a typical scenario. You want the Canaries group, which is the very first uh, test users that will get created or, or, or get Power Automate de uh, deployed to them. Then you'll have a pilot group, which is uh, you know power users or other IT uh, members, so a slightly larger ring, and then uh, you know your your standard deployment to everyone else, or or even you can break it out into further groups if you want. But just for this demonstration, I'm just going to start with the three. So Canaries is going to be like the your machine, Pilot is going to be um, a couple of power users or maybe some other IT users, and then a general deployment. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the first group, which I already have created. So you'll see that I have uh, install Power Automate Canaries, install Power Automate Pilot, and install Power Automate All Users. Uh, and the reason that I start with it being install is just so that way when you have multiple apps being deployed from Intune, it's nice to be able to just type in install as part of the search and it'll bring up all of your apps that you, that you have deployed here. So uh, this is just a naming convention that I like to do. Uh, of course, you're free to do your own naming conventions. Once you get the group created, the next step would be to actually install Power Automate on a test machine. So just fire up a brand new uh, Windows 10 machine. This can be your machine, the same machine that you're using to package. Uh, I like to use fresh machines just to make sure that there's no conflicts with other uh, software or applications, but um, feel free to do it on your own uh, packaging machine if you wish. So one thing that uh, you will also want to do is to download and install uh, PS Exec on your PC. And the reason that you're going to want to do this is so that way you can launch a command prompt window as a system account. The reason that you want to test your silent installer with a system account is because that's the same way that both Intune and SCCM install uh, applications is that system. So when you're testing it on your test machine to make sure that your uh, install commands are going to work and that your application supports silent installs, it's nice to do it as system uh, just so that way you don't run into issues later. So 
go ahead and launch a command prompt window with administrative privileges. Change directory into your uh, PS exec location. We're just going to do a PS exec slash or dash S dash I cmd.exe. Now the dash S means uh, launch as system and dash I means launch in interactive mode. So basically it's going to launch another window of cmd.exe running as system. So actually before I run that, I could do a who am I? And you'll see that my user account is my uh, the user account that I'm using on this desktop. But if I run this as It launches another command prompt window. And now I'm running as NT authority system. So this is just a great way to test uh, your application installs as system. Make sure that the silent install commands work properly. So I went ahead and I already downloaded the Power Automate desktop setup file. The next thing that I would want to do is just check the latest Microsoft documentation on uh, Microsoft Power Automate Desktop to find out, make sure that the command line arguments have not changed since the last time uh, I installed it. Let's go ahead and open up Edge, and I'm just going to look up Power Automate Desktop Silent Install. It should bring me to the docs.microsoft.com article, which has all of the silent uh, install commands in the article. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to see, okay, this is the same as it's listed in my documentation, but it's just a good practice to check, make sure that, uh, you know, because this is subject to change between versions. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this setup line. I'm going to paste it into my command prompt window. And basically what this is going to now do is it's going to test to make sure that Power Automate Desktop installs silently from as system. And that's one of the prerequisites for being able to package an app through Intune or SCCM. So I'll go ahead and I'll check my command prompt or my task manager. And I'll be able to see set up Power Automate Desktop here running as system. That's a good sign. I can also check AppWiz. And I can check to make sure that it gets installed properly in the add remove programs. So I'll wait for this to finish. And then the next step is going to be checking in the registry for the MSI product code of the application that I just installed. So let's say you're not using Power Automate Desktop, you'll still want to perform this step because this is going to get us the MSI product code of the app that we're deploying. And we'll need that for packaging later. So what you do is you open up your registry, regedit, and you go to HK Local Machine, Software, Wow, 64, 32 node, if it's a 64-bit application. Microsoft, Windows, current version, and then uninstall. This is another reason that I like to use uh, brand new test machines is usually there's not a ton of stuff in here, so I don't have to hunt through uh, all these uninstall keys to find the correct one. So basically what you'll see is we'll just highlight them here on the left-hand side, look on the right-hand side, and it looks like I got it first try. Uh, it was the very one, first one at the top, but uh, one of the things that I can do is I can click through them and look, I'm looking for display name and display version, right? So the reason that I'm looking for this is I'm going to use a detection string later to check this location in registry, and it's going to check this display version to make sure it matches, and that's how Intune or SCCM will know whether or not the application was installed successfully. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the MSI product code, put that in a notepad document. And then I'm going to take the display version 
And I'm going to copy that and put that in a document as well. So now I've tested two things. I've made sure that one, yes, this application does install silently as system. And I have the detection rules that I will need. Uh, well, I'll need this string here. for checking the registry to make sure that this gets installed properly uh, during uh, the, the packaging process. So now I move over to my other workstation. And this is where we set up the uh, Win32 content prep tool from, this is only for Intune, um, but basically you download this Intune WinApp util from that uh, link that I showed earlier. I'll show it again. Once you download it from the here, I like to put it in a packager folder on the root of my C drive. And then you'll also want to create two more folders. Uh, I like to create a packages folder where I can put my uh, packages once they've been zipped up by the packager or the Win32 content prep tool. And then I like to have a sources folder where I put my installers. And so you'll see, I'll create like a Power Automate desktop. And then I'll put the Power Automate desktop installer in this folder. Now, this, this, anything that's inside this folder is going to get packaged by the packager when I go through these steps. So if you have, you know, configuration files in here, XML files, uh, MSI transform files, anything like that, they will get packaged with the installer. So you can even run PowerShell scripts using this uh, to package it. Um, but, and this is where I kind of like to keep my sources. So you basically you'll have three folders, packager, packages, and sources. Then you launch command prompt as administrator. You'll change directory into your packager and you'll just run the Intune WinApp util.exe. It'll ask you for the source folder. So I just like to come here. I just like to copy and paste that because it just helps me not make typos. It asks for the setup file. So you can click F2 here and then just copy the name. And then you want to specify the output folder. So if you created the three output folders, basically you're going to just put C packages in here. And this is where it's going to create the Intune Win uh, Util folder, which we can then upload to Intune. Uh, catalog folders are not important unless you're using a very specific version of Windows. And in most cases, you can just go ahead and click on no here. For more information on catalog folders, uh, you know, visit the Intune documentation on, on what, that, what that is. But you'll see it uh, is packaging everything in that folder. Uh, you'll get a nice progress bar down here as it kind of writes everything to a file and you'll get a nice info done uh, here. Uh, we're done with the packager at this point. So now you'll see uh, in my packages folder, I've got the setup Microsoft Power Automate desktop dot Intune win. This is the file that I will actually upload to Intune in order to create the app. Thank you for watching this video on creating the Intune package. In our next subsection, we'll be looking at configuring the Intune for deploying the package. Thank you.